Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Secrets of Radicon. Radicon? I'm not totally sure. It's Secrets of something that sounds like a Pokemon, that's the only thing that matters. This is uh, now available on Steam Early Access and I have a little bit of a history with this game. Like, the very bare minimumist of a history with this game. It's based uh, on a game called Chasing Aurora, which was a Wii U eShop launch-ish title. And basically the way that it worked is uh, you played as a bird, and it was kind of like a multiplayer tag slash capture the flag or like keep away type game where, you know, one of the birds would hold onto the ball and the other one would try to catch it and, you know, you'd play with your friends and laugh and have a good time with the physics of the game and hate each other. And it was kind of novel, but it never really grabbed me. And this is uh, the developer's follow-up, which is, you know, for PC and maybe other consoles as well, I'm not totally sure. Um, but it's much more of a single-player kind of puzzle platformy type thing that we've got going on. I'm actually going to start a new game here. Uh, just so you can actually experience what's going on because I am a little bit a little ways into the game maybe close to an hour uh, And things are getting a little tricky. This is a puzzle platformer. It reminds me most similarly uh, Actually of something like Fez and now keep in mind this has no you know relationship with Phil Fish as far as I know So I know Fez is a bad word to some communities uh, This just has the same structure as Fez for what it's worth. I, I like Fez a great deal so, the uh, main selling point of Chasing Aurora, I thought, and uh, the thing that's most immediately apparent when you play Secrets of Radicon, by the way, I should mention, Steam Early Access, available for 10 bucks right now, or I think it's 25% off for its opening week sale, and it will be 10 bucks uh, full price, um, is the visual style. So, we've got like a really kind of cool, colorful, almost like aboriginal art kind of style looking uh, aesthetic here. It's neat, and the music works really well as well uh, from an aesthetic standpoint, both audio and visually. Uh, this, this game does a very good job. What do we have going on in the gameplay? Well, uh, the most important thing I guess is just your locomotion. This is how you move around. It feels good. feels like you're a bird. Uh, you, I'm using the 360 controller, but keyboard and mouse works fine as well. I played it at PAX. Uh, 2013 PAX Prime, and I believe I used keyboard and mouse for that, and I, you know, it, it worked fine back then. Um, what we do here is basically, as a bird, we have a very small kind of assortment of uh, abilities at our disposal is one way to put it. So, the best ability is obviously, you know, being able to fly. This will allow us to get away from enemies, but also locomote, locomote towards uh, puzzle solutions and pieces and things that we'll need. Uh, we also have the ability to grab things, and we can do that via the right bumper. I'm not sure what it actually is on the keyboard, but it may pop up during the tutorial anyway. And we can pick things up and drop them. This is useful for killing enemies, uh, or, you know, moving things from place to place. We can also, and this might cause some slowdown here, which I'm a little concerned about. Ah, it actually worked pretty well. Uh, we can uproot trees, and this will allow, actually allow us to get those red triangles, which represent our health. Uh, apart from that, we also have a dive, and we can use this again to, to damage enemies or to just evade them. And this was key in the uh, in, in Chasing Aurora, the multiplayer mode, because you wanted to uh, use that as often as possible to kind of like trick enemies. And if you're being chased, it's a good thing to do uh, to just get away. So I know it says right trigger, it's actually right bumper that we use there. And, uh, the way that the game works is we collect these kind of tries here, almost Race the Sun style. Uh, and then we use these almost to open doors in a, uh, like a, a Nintendo 64 platformer style, you know? Like a Super Mario 64, you need X number of stars to open this door, or, you know, Banjo-Kazooie, you need X number of puzzle pieces to open this door. And we try to solve puzzles, so we open the door, solve a puzzle inside, get some puzzle pieces, or not puzzle pieces, but, you know, get some trinkets, and then move on, and we continue to do so. Now, I should mention this is still very much in alpha, so I don't know how complete it is. Uh, but there's some cool stuff going on here. There's some stuff I like, some stuff I don't like. Oh, I just pulled the branch off there. We'll talk about that more as we get in. The thing I don't like the most, absolutely the, the, the frame rate seems to tank pretty nastily when you pull saplings out. That Hopefully that's something that gets worked on. That's really the most glaring problem so far. Uh, is this a cave that I can actually enter? It is not. So this is a rabbit, you know, we, we can pick up animals and then drop them if we so choose and that may allow that rabbit to get hurt. I actually just pierced it with my beak and probably killed it and got some extra HP. You know, this is a lot of the jungle, man. It might look peaceful, but this is a game that is actually uh, very, very violent and uh, the enemies that you encounter in this game are annoying as hell. In a good way and a bad way, I suppose. Alright, so I have gotten myself lost here. There we go. So another uh, aspect of the game, which is important to talk about, is runestones. Now these runestones are a little bit weird. Maybe get out of the way there so you can kind of see it. Um, the runestone is, uh, basically it contains a message. And I don't know if these are messages that are actually about the game. Like if it's like, hey, put the statue head on the body and then it'll open the door. Or if it's just like, things that maybe provide some flavor text or narrative for the background. Like, oh, once upon a time there was, you know, you get the idea. Or both maybe. But what's cool is that as we complete quests, we will actually get uh, 
basically we'll slowly uncover the dictionary that will allow us to translate this so we'll encounter these rune stones that basically allow us to translate and you know it doesn't translate automatically which is something I hope gets added uh, but we could sit here and you know with a pen and paper or just with our mind uh, or, or you know with conscious thought I should say you know mentally translate this entire note and look at it but I don't have the dictionary uh, right now because we have to actually unlock those rune stones in any case there's also some letters that are obviously very similar to just you know the English alphabet as well so like the one of those words certainly looks like rises one of them certainly looks like falls it's like one empire rises another falls wait sorry one empire falls another rises something falls something I don't know and then maybe tomorrow at the end that's the best I can do so it's like vaguely more than vaguely I suppose it's it's English ish oh there's a runestone right there by the way maybe we could, that'll help us uh, translate it ever so slightly if we want to but you can definitely see where the Fez comparisons are coming in so that uh, like weird fish ish looking uh, rune is an A do we have any of those in there yeah it's where the falls was and another and so that and falls another rises and falls and eh, whatever we'll figure it out at some point um the fez comparisons go beyond the game just having a cipher or you know several different languages involved the puzzles are pretty similar as well in the, the way that the game is so minimalistic so um this is an example of one of these doors that we come across this is one of the major ones this actually is less of a door and more of like a story kind of alter if that makes sense so by pressing the X button I can release all of those white and yellow tries that I've gotten over the course of this run and you can see any more slivers okay so they call them slivers uh, if we get enough slivers we'll actually be able to interact with that thing in an interesting way and we'll see more and more of this as we go on here so let's grab all of these things and we'll just kind of follow the current I messed that one up a little bit but that's okay should be able to fly like back over the surface here cameras a little wonky sometimes but uh, that's okay again still early access alpha and you know as far as early access releases go uh, this one probably hues a little bit towards the median in terms of uh, not necessarily completeness but uh, stability I've had a few crashes when I played through the game it's definitely uh, an example of a game where you know it might be interesting to look at right now if you don't want to experience bugs if you'd rather just play the game in its finished state then wait for it to actually be out because as of right now oh I'm missing one more sliver that actually kind of sucks uh, if you uh, if you don't want to experience bugs and stuff like that I, I would advise you to you know stay away for now because uh, I have experienced a few and also uh, just some random like graphical glitches and slowdown and stuff like that difficulty loading saves occasionally but um, let me see if I can find this other try somewhere or sliver because I appear to have bunged it up a little bit oh I guess maybe if I grab this rune stone uh, oh there's actually a sliver down here that I just missed okay so that kind of sucks I didn't realize that if you just passed over one of the slivers uh, you couldn't progress past this tutorial stage or maybe I passed over like six of them I don't know, by the way, what the blue slivers actually do, but we do, you know, get more and more of those as we go along. Uh, and I'm not really sure what function they have. I've played for like an hour, and I've never seen my counter go down, as far as I'm sure, or as far as I'm aware. So, uh, once you actually activate these kind of, like, totems here, you can interact with them in some way. Sometimes you pull a lever, sometimes you, like, dangle a chain, sometimes you do some physics-based puzzling always it'll open like a new area for you here and give you a shard so that shard is actually the way that we actually progress through the game this is kind of like picture it as like a Super Mario Land 2 and the six golden coins or land of the six golden coins I can't remember what the actual first word in that title is uh, but where you needed like all these uh, coins in order to progress to finally fight the final boss who was like Wario Tomo it's okay man it's kinda like that we need to get all these shards and by getting these shards oh go up there we go uh, by getting these shards, this unlocks further and further parts of the levels. And also, you can see the, in the cages, there's the, the birds in there. So what we have to do over the rest of the game is find the other six shards. If you'll give me a second here. Tomo! What's going on? Oh, he's running away from me. He just wants to play. Not right now! Daddy's doing work. Okay. So what we want to do, um, the game kind of sticks to this kind of rhythm that you can probably feel right now uh, of generating or finding as many slivers as possible and then eventually you'll find a door and then or a gate if you will and then you're going to uh, release all of your slivers open the gate and then probably solve a puzzle they're in we haven't really seen any puzzles so far uh, but we will before we get too much further in fact I think this is pretty much uh, not necessarily linear obviously it looks like it is kind of like a metroidvania style setup but this is the area that I went to before so, so I should know how to solve some of these puzzles alright so now you're gonna get a kind of a feel for how 
assholish the enemies are in uh, Secrets of Radicon here. Actually, never mind. We're just going to go inside of this cave instead. So basically, it's it's kind of a mixture of like flying around and you're flying around to, you know, get slivers and actually solving puzzles. And the puzzles do require some thought in some cases, but they have been largely relatively easy just because you have such a limited kind of skill set with which to interact with them. You can lift things, you can kill things if you're very creative about it. That's about it, but hopefully we'll come across some uh, in the very near future. For now, let's just keep getting some slivers. And again, you know, keep in mind as we kind of fly about here, we can uh, pull saplings out and get health. It's actually fairly fully featured for a... Uh, oh, there we go. So we have the opportunity to actually interact with it right here. It's actually fairly fully featured for uh, an early access game. There we go. So we actually have opened this. I'm not sure why I didn't fill up the triangles there at the top. Uh, but now we have to figure out how to interact with it. So every this is what's kind of cool is that every puzzle is very minimalistic in that same sort of Fez kind of style where you're like, okay, I don't, I know I have to interact with this in some way, but I'm not sure how. Uh, a little bit like uh, Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery EP as well, you know? Puzzle platformers come in all shapes and sizes. This is definitely much less of the, like, braid, vessel, Tesla grad style puzzle platformer and much more on the, uh, the side of, like, a Super Brothers or a, um, a Fez, as mentioned. So here's an, a legitimate puzzle that I remember. So this is good. This is one of the several, like, puzzle archetypes that we come across in the game. And a, a really good example of, of the kind of cool art design of the game as well. It's maybe not the most visually striking game I've ever seen, but it's pretty to look at for sure. So, you might be able to figure out what's going on here. Basically, it's like, what's wrong with this picture and how can you fix it? We see this owl statue, looks good to me. And we see, like, a bird statue over here as well, but then the bird statue over here is crumbled and we've got to fix it. So, let's do that. Um... Obviously, there's the head right here, so we'll just drag this up to the top. And I think this is only a three-piece puzzle, but maybe the the hard part of it is actually uh, trying to put these together with the physics-based uh, kind of flying that you've got going on here. Because you can't really just pick it up like touchscreen style and then rotate the pieces. I'm not sure if this is a positive or a negative, really. Because, and on the one hand, you're like, wow, this is really difficult, that's really frustrating. On the other hand, you're like, yeah, you know, this would probably be like a really shitty thing for a bird to have to do. This would probably be really annoying. But you, eventually you get kind of acquainted with the physics of the game. We need another puzzle piece, I think. I got a little ahead of myself. So let's take a look down here, and we'll take a look at the runestone as well. To first nature something empire to drive the Ramones tomorrow. All right, well, the, the Ramones need to drive to the mall tomorrow, Robin Sparkle style, that's okay. Uh, is there another piece down here? Again, I could actually start translating these. I only have three letters, so it would be a little bit of a, a futile kind of uh, arrangement, but they're so vaguely similar to English that it looks like you can just figure it out. Like, doesn't this look like criminal power out of stories? And then maybe that's like the, the author's name down there at the bottom? I don't know, let's check out this one. What do we have in here? Four... Uh, something A. Okay, well that's not even close. But we'll keep picking up these blue slivers. Again, I, I'm not totally sure what they actually accomplish for us, and that's something that I hope will illuminate itself over the course of the game, if it is uh, kind of already added into the game, if that makes sense. What is nice about the puzzle pieces is that as soon as they uh, kind of fall into the proper place, they lock in. So it's not like you actually have to set them up and there's still going to be like micro cracks between them, and then there's the, the possibility that they'll just fall off. See, there you go, they kind of snap into place like so. So, we will assemble this four-piece puzzle. I think we've got to get like the corner to match up with the corner here, so just steady. Oh, steady. Come on. I swear to you this is harder than it looks, and it'll fall down perfectly. There we go. All right, so by doing that we get some of our uh, blue slivers, and maybe we unlock uh, something else as well. Well, we've certainly unlocked this door here that I can now invest uh, more slivers in. But no such luck uh, for anything else. This guy might actually give us a shard, so... You know, it's almost like you have, like, micro puzzles and then macro puzzles. And the macro puzzles give you a shard. You carry that shard back to that kind of hub world that we had at the start. And the micro puzzles, you know, they put you on the quest to get a shard. Which is okay as well. So now that we've done that, we probably need uh, just a few... Oh, yep. Oh, the bird's got me. I'm going to let him do his thing so you can see how assholeish these enemies are. Basically, they just throw you into, like, thorns, or they uh, dive bomb you into thorns, and then you take damage as a result. I've died many times, actually, while playing this. This is, you know, far from just, like, your grandma's friendly puzzle platformer. Sorry, grandma. 
Hey, here's an example of an environmental puzzle as well. If I come down here, you can see this, but I can't get through because there's this uh, log in the way, obviously. What we can do, and again, it's pretty simplistic, but it's also cool, is we can pull this rock away, and then big rock will fall down here. And if we follow it down, then you can see it'll just break through the wood, and there are more slivers for us. So we'll come down here, and I'll, I'll see if I recognize what's actually happening in this area. Because we might just want to go back now that we have 16 slivers, and uh, maybe to first nature, uh, nature of the Ramones. I don't know why the Ramones are always factoring in so heavily into this game. If only I could figure out what that actual last word means. Someone could probably figure it out. Oh, here's a good example. So this one takes 10. Uh, slivers, and it'll open a gate for us. Good. Uh, and then, you know, if you accidentally send out too many slivers, that's okay. And then we're like, okay, well, I thought this would open the gate for us. Well, what you gotta do is instead figure out how to interact with it. I really like this about the game. How, uh, every time you kind of, like, your work's not done just because you brought the slivers to the door. You actually have to figure out what kind of mechanism to interact with it, uh, via, which is kind of cool. Okay, this is, uh, another kind of puzzle area we're getting here. I apologize if it seems like I'm kind of meandering. I am kind of meandering, and it's largely because with a game as minimalistic, I'm not totally sure what the express purpose is, and that, that happens a, a lot of the time when you're playing these, these kind of games with like first impression style videos. So, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily warrant a full review yet, maybe when it actually comes out in a kind of further release, but it's, it's a game that's neat enough and novel enough that I wanted to take a look at it. Uh, and, and it's not irresponsible to take a look at it at this point in early access, because it actually, you know, works largely. So, we have uh, an area with some foxes here, and as we fly by them, we will actually wake them up. And as you might expect, uh, this is... well, we'll get the runestone first when the tail disappears, but um, this is going to be an example of a uh, very similar kind of puzzle to what we saw with that owl a little bit earlier. And this does bring up like one of the things that I think is a negative about the game right now. The puzzles are a little bit repetitive. Uh, they're either physics-based, like you saw me with opening that door by using that, uh, like, pendulum as kind of a, a hammer, or they, uh, uh, largely consist of just trying to, uh, assemble statues. Mind you, it's cool enough in its own right, uh, for the most part, it's kept me reasonably engaged over the hour or so that I played with it, um, just because it, it's kind of, there's a joy to movement in this game, if that makes sense, like, just being able to kind of fly like birds fly feels good. Uh, I was not a big fan of Chasing Aurora at all, by the way, like, I, I got a review code for the game back when it came out for the Wii U, played it for like an hour, and then was like, I don't really like this, and I also think since it's multiplayer only, that me playing against the AI is gonna make for a really, really bad video. Um, so, I, I just never covered it. And I was like, oh, Secrets of Radicon, the cynic in me was like, didn't make much money on Chasing Aurora, spent a lot of time on the engine, gotta, like, repurpose that engine to actually make some money back. But, truth be told, it's better than just to cash in on the, on the work that's already been done, for sure. So, we have, uh, as you might expect, a statue in here. We also have a monolith, like 2001 Space Odyssey style. Uh, you are probably realizing, and you're almost certainly right, that to open this, uh, what we need to do is create this fox statue. So let's try that. This one's a little bit more of a difficult puzzle because you actually have to uh, do some execution type stuff. Remember in, in puzzle platformers I always talk about like, oh, there's like a, a, a spectrum. Like, is it harder to execute or is it harder to conceptualize what to do? There's very few puzzles in uh, Secrets of Radicon, at least so far, that are difficult to conceptualize or difficult to uh, execute. But it's still reasonably fun to play so far regardless. Um, and I think, you know, it is one of those things where if you're a, a big fan of aesthetics, this may tickle your fancy, and if you're not a big fan of aesthetics, this might not be your thing, and that's totally fine, too. Uh, but I am having an okay time. It probably will not be a, a game that I finish, at least certainly not while it's on early access, but it, I, I know a lot of people are excited about it, and I can understand that there's a good reason for that. So we actually shook some slivers out of the wind chimes there by flying into them. I think this is, again, like a four-part puzzle. I really dig the song that happens in that fox area, too. Um, I think it's a four-part puzzle, and I only have three of the parts right now. So I have to find the other ones, and I think there's one maybe down here that I can carry with me. Yes. Okay, so we'll go get this. And yes, I understand that there is another uh, door here. This will actually give us a sliver, I think, if we uh, unlock it. Uh, but let's just go with this puzzle first, because uh, I know what I am getting myself into here. So this is the head, obviously. Probably the least important part of it for now. We'll just put this up here on top of the, the monolith. And then the final puzzle piece is in the worst fucking position. We have to go all the way back down here into this, like, bramble cave and, and get it. Hey! The fox butts! 
is that that should be Michael L. Fox's like first emoticon on Twitch. You gotta go all the way back down here, and yeah, if you walk into the or fly into the sides, you take damage. So it's a little tricky. I should be able to get out of here without getting killed. What I've done a like a really poor job of showing off so far is that it actually is. Oh no! Oh no! It, it's very easy to die. Let's get out of here and get some uh, get some HP back. It's very easy to die, and it's fairly difficult to get back to where you died. It's almost got like a Dark Souls style thing going on where uh, you you go back and you get your blood stain and you actually get all your slivers back. You want to do that, but I'm not sure if you die on the way if they actually disappear. But um, it's annoying to get all the way back because checkpoints can be a little bit few and far between. Also, every time you like hit Bramble, you drop what you're holding, which is the the really shitty part. Because otherwise, we could maybe be a little bit safer in here. Just get over the hump, then you'll be fine. There we go. So that's a puzzle that was... No, it's a puzzle. There's a stretch that was um, reasonably difficult in execution, but very easily conceived. But uh, we're not talking about your mother here, so let's just move onwards. Okay, so I believe this is the first piece that goes down, and it kind of gets rotated, and probably should pick it up from a different vertex here if I'm going to make this work. This one looks like it should be okay, I think. How does this lock on? I think it's like this. Like, what? just come up just a little bit. Just a little bit. Oh, too much. That should be good. Okay, there we go. Now we need the piece with like the triangle part over top. I think it's this one. How does this fit on there? I'm like looking at the other uh, fox to try to li like line it up. I think this is it though. If I can just like lay this one on top a little bit. Oh, closer. There we go. And then put the head on top. And uh, we should unlock another gate or something along those lines here. So let's rotate this one around. Again, I grabbed this from like totally the wrong end. This is, you know, physics based through and through. So you do have to pay attention to stuff like that. It is not just like, you know, click and drag. Uh, and, you know, that's frustrating at times. But it's also, you know, it adds a nice little element of kind of flubbing to the game. It's like good frustration, like the kind of frustration you get when you're playing Quop or something like that. Because you're like, seriously, bird, if you just had opposable thumbs, this would be so easy. It's okay, though. I'm glad they don't, because they would probably be in line to take over the world at some point. They can fucking fly. Now, we've opened this up. Again, this is, I, I think it's fair to say this is pretty fezzy. So that's gonna, cool environmental stuff happening as well, as you can see. This didn't actually open up a, uh... A, a, a gate for us to put slivers into, it actually just opened up a, a cave for us to fly into, and I forget what we've got going on now. Oh, I remember, yeah. It gets a little bit weird, and like, this is where I actually finished the uh, off-camera play that I was actually doing, I think. Mind you, it took me like three times as long, because I was just kind of flubbing myself around for a while. We'll come back in here in a second. What I do want to do just before we finish the episode is you'll be able to see me... Uh, get that extra sliver, and when I get that extra sliver, that'll be where we end it, because, you know, you gotta fly all the way back to that hub world, which takes forever. And it's a little bit frustrating, like, that is a genuinely objective frustrating part, I think, is flying the extra shard back to the hub world. Do I even, I don't even have enough here to do this. Well, you can do the math for yourself, as you might expect. I would grab this thing and then, like, roll it all the way up here. But anyway, we'd get it and then take it back to the hub world, but it takes forever, and every time you get hit, you drop it. So that's the, uh, annoying part, but it's also, you know, it's difficult for a reason. Af, wait, what, did we not have that letter? I thought we had that letter. It's like, as something contraption, Jeep, the Ramones aren't involved in this one. But in any case, this has been Secrets of Radicon. Radicon. Radicon just sounds like a cartoon about, you know, anthropomorphic mice. Maybe they're like, they fight crime, obviously, but I'm just trying to think if they're cyborgs or mutants. But anyway, Secrets of Radicon. It's available uh, on Steam Early Access, $7.49 for its opening week sale, $9.99. After that, is it worth picking up in Early Access? If you like what you see, yes. If you don't, you know, it probably will never be worth picking up for you if you don't like what you see, because it, it seems reasonably, you know, the, the concept is set in stone at the very least. Oh my god, what happened over here? Uh, it seems reasonably set in stone. That being said, it is intriguing, and if you're into, uh, minimalist style puzzle games I would definitely encourage you to pick this up and uh, from an aesthetic standpoint really really beautiful both uh, you know visually and uh, from an audio standpoint as well so it's cool I have mixed feelings on it overall probably won't be my favorite game of the year but I'm glad I spent the time with it that I did uh, and again links in the video description below to pick it up if you're interested as always if you enjoyed the episode make sure to show your support by clicking the like button it would help out a great deal and of course subscribe if you want to see more first impressions like this in the future as always thanks for watching I'll see you next time